Hello viewers and welcome back to this season's business program. I'm Festus Maigner. We left off last year with optimism from all business sectors that 2013 will be a year of even greater achievements for Papua New Guinea in terms of investment, trade and building on the fundamentals of stronger bilateral relations. Investor perception is forecasted to grow now that we have a stable government. The economy is projected to grow by 4% as the multi-billion Kina gas project winds down its construction phase. And with all the economic projections, global publishing, research and consultancy firm, Oxford Business Group, is planning yet another investment guide for the year. But this time, putting much emphasis on the tangible opportunities and implementation aspects. Here's an interview with OBG's regional editor, Polis Kunsinis. Polis, welcome again on the show. Thank you, Festus. Great to be here. It's the last time we talked about the launch of Papua New Guinea 2012 report. I believe you guys are preparing for the 2013 report. Now, what would be new? What are we expecting new from this report? That's right. We are back in Port Moresby. Um, usually when I get uh, asked this question, I struggle sometimes because uh, in some countries there's not that much happening. Uh, but fortunately here in Papua New Guinea, uh, there's in fact too much going on, I've, I've been struggling to stay on top of it. <laughs> Just this last week I've met with uh, private sector CEOs, with uh, public sector decision making, makers, and it seems like uh, since, since the election, uh, investors have finally gained confidence to really explore the opportunities to come here and not just in the, in the oil, oil and gas and mineral sectors, but across the entire economy. So it's a, 2013 promises to be a very dynamic year and our team, although we will follow the same, uh, the same methodology and, and the same template, so we'll try to offer a concise overview of the entire economy, our focus this year will be much more on tangible opportunities and on implementation, on how you actually convert these investment opportunities into real uh, foreign direct investment. So we will be touching all obviously on risks, we'll be talking about the hurdles, the, the bureaucratic hurdles, uh, infrastructure gaps, funding issues, etc. Um, so it promises to be a very exciting project and I very much look forward to uh, continuing working on it. So what is your, your take on investor perception now that we have a fully uh, fledged government? Well, there's been a huge improvement in terms of uh, uh, foreign perceptions of Papua New Guinea. It's suddenly perceived as a stable, politically stable place, a place where you can do business. Um, and uh, especially if uh, we're seeing this, uh, this is manifest in, in the arrival, not just of the traditional usual suspects uh, from uh, in this region, but also from f uh, places like uh, the Philippines, in India, uh, new investors from Europe, and even Indonesia, which didn't, uh, which was until recently a fairly isolated neighbour. Hmm. So we're talking about you. You mentioned about India. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a economic specialist who've come up on the show saying that uh, India is going to be a likable trading partner with Papua New Guinea, as we have so much in common that they need. Uh, what's your take on that? I think that's a very, very t uh, true and correct observation. Um, I think India, as, as we know as well as China, is hungry for resources. Uh, they, in contrast to China, Indian investors tend to be more private sector driven, so they're quite entrepreneurial. They already have the capital and experience of working in emerging markets in developing countries. Uh, they are uh, they're risk takers, so they're willing to, you know, look through difficulties, um, and they, I think, they can engage with Papua New Guinea um, in a number of sectors. Most importantly, perhaps in the agriculture, in plantations, uh, obviously also in in some mining projects. Uh, but I think India is is likely to emerge as a big trading and investment partner for PNG. Stay tuned for more on the other side of the break.
2012 was a volatile year for the European Union and the United States. International analysts predicted in November that the Eurozone's return to recession was bad news as it was crippling the once stronger economies like Germany and Greece. This means the recession will continue and have a bigger impact on US consumers and companies. But the question we should be asking is, how has Papua New Guinea fared amidst this entire international hurdle and what can we expect in 2013? So, Polis, what is it like for the commodities market in terms of uh, Europe and the US? It's been, a, I will be honest, it's been a quite a volatile year. Very difficult for investors to have a firm conviction view as to what will happen to basic commodities such as oil, gas, uh, oil palm, rubber, etc. Um, but fundamentally, we know that the, the the market dynamics are such that uh, the demand con is, con is continuing slowly, uh, gradually increasing, uh, still driven by uh, China, India, i.e. emerging markets. And the supply, is, uh, the supply side is, is actually responding quite slowly. So a lot of investment decisions have been on hold because of Europe. European debt crisis because of events in the United States. So fundamentally, it's it's quite a positive outlook for price from price point of view. I think investors still think that uh, uh, oil and gas will continue to to be perm almost permanently at this level with some maybe uh, temporary corrections. Uh, the commodity sector, the agricultural commodities, also look fairly bullish. Um, in the sort of medium term, so the the bottom line is is fairly a fairly uh, favorable external environment for Papua New Guinea, uh, and in a lot of investors are willing to uh, take risks in order to uh, position themselves for the next growth cycle. So, what is the general uh, food security and the agro business outlook for for the globe? This is a very sensitive and becoming more and more political issue. Um, especially this year, we had, uh, as you know, we, we, there was a ba bad harvest in the U.S. Uh, there were issues with uh, f uh, flooding in, in places like Thailand, so which affected um, the, yield, the yields uh, and output. So a lot of nations still fall back on the good old. Uh, uh, methods of stockpiling, of price controls, export controls, which uh, uh, is uh, we tend to think is is a negative development for uh, international trade. In fact, is a negative development for food security because it discourages investment in these mm. sectors. So, where does Papua New Guinea stand in this scenario? Well, Papua New Guinea uh, is in a very in still early stages, as we know the agricultural sector here r remains largely uh, informal. There, are, there is only a small proportion of, of formalized um, modern agriculture. So it's in that sense it's immune from what's happening uh, outside. Uh, but obviously also Papua New Guinea depends on the imports on certain, of certain staples. And in that sense it is, it is vulnerable. Uh, I think the, the key lesson here is that food security must be treated as one of the top policy priorities and the best way to address the issue of food security is through developing your own agriculture. This is a very rich country that every, I, I keep saying to my friends, it seems like a, it's a paradise island where everything grows from, from coffee to coca to uh, tropical fruits to palm oil. Any, anything you put in the ground, it grows, mm -hmm. it seems. So there is really no reason uh, if uh, through, through a bit of policy, uh, modern technology, funding, um, and uh, restructuring and reform, you should be able to emerge as one of the big producers of this region. In fact, enough to export to regional markets, such as India, mm -hmm. as we just mentioned. When we come back, we talk about Australia's look to Asia policy and the association of the Southeast Asian nations, or ASEAN.
If you've just joined us, you're watching the first edition of Business PNG in 2013, and we're having a discussion with Polias Consinas, the regional editor for the Oxford Business Group. Now, how much do we know about ASEAN, or the Association of Southeast Asian Nations? Well, one thing for sure is that agreement negotiations are underway for Papua New Guinea. We'll draw some light on that area during the interview, but first, Australia is tilted towards the Asian policy. Now, what does this imply on its traditional focus on the Pacific? So, um, with Australia still to the Asian policy, uh, where does Papua New stand in this scenario? Yeah, um, it's a very good question. Uh, we, in fact, asked the same question we met with uh, recently with Mr. Richard Mars, uh, who is the Parliamentary Secretary for Australia, uh, for pa Pacific. And I think I generally believe when he says that this is not somehow a mutually exclusive uh, scenario where uh, Australia's focus on Asia excludes its traditional focus on the Pacific. I think generally uh, Australia has come to a point in its development strategy where, where it wants to engage with the outside world. And in its immediate, obviously, the, its immediate priority is to engage get more integrated with the Asian market. I think that's in fact very positive, very good news for Papua New Guinea because you find yourself in the midst on the trade routes and rather than you know think of it as being excluded or somehow that you are being uh, left out from this process, I think there are many opportunities for you being part of the process and uh, Mr. Miles mentioned how many already companies that are cooperating for Papua New Guineans working in Australian in the mining sector and vice versa Australian companies investing uh, in Papua, Papua New Guinea. Guinea. Yeah. So I think I think net 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 this is a big positive that your big neighbor is in fact engaging more with the outside world and and, and specifically Asia. So, Paul, is two winding down. Now, what's happening in the region? What's hot on the topic in terms of uh, foreign uh, capital? Well, still, I mean, the big theme in 2013 will still be ASEAN. I think people have realized that the, especially the emergence of Indonesia has uh, really put this region, Southeast Asia and the Pacific, on the map. ASEAN stands for the uh, Asian Southeast Asia uh, Economic area. It's a, it's a concept that emerged back in the 60s modeled on the European Union. It was supposed to uh, create a trade bloc and the founding members there being uh, Ma Malaysia, Thailand, uh, Singapore and Indonesia. They wanted to create a free trade uh, zone. So it started off as a free trade uh, zone Nowadays, it's become more of an integrated economic community where the idea is to, to facilitate a free movement of labor um, and capital as, as similar to the European Union. And I think, uh, as we know, Papua New Guinea has expressed a desire to join the club, uh, especially it's being backed by its neighbor, the Philippines. And um, I think it's a big opportunity because um, ASEAN is emerging, it's a, it's a big market of, of 600 million people. It's, it has the best growth characteristics of high single digit growth, above 5%. And investors are taking notice of it. So I think, again, uh, the way I would look at it, I would see this as an opportunity for PNG to tap into the, what, you, what they call a, a new supply chains. So investors aren't just coming to invest in one country, they're always looking to create a supply chain across uh, the region. So the, the demand is still in China, in India, also obviously in this region. Uh, the supply will come from places like Indonesia, but also in the future, I think, from, uh, uh, from PNG. So when you ask me what are the hottest destinations, I think People have stopped looking at countries individually and increasingly they're looking at, at the region as a whole. Obviously Indonesia dominates headlines because of its size, because of its growth uh, characteristics. Uh, but the, the newest kid on the block 
is of course Myanmar, the, the, what the British call it Burma. It has just opened up all of a sudden and very quickly. Uh, uh, as you may know, uh, President Obama will be visiting Myanmar yes. on the 17th of this month. And uh, a lot of investors now are trying to connect the dots. So you have uh, even more regional investors, so for invest companies from Thailand are looking for agribusiness. So what's the pull factor there? The pull, f the pull factor is simply it's been a closed market for 50 years. Back in, you know, in, the, in the days of the, 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 the British East India Company, Myanmar was one of the biggest exporters of everything to the world, from rice to agricultural uh, goods. And for about 40 years, it has been completely close to the outside world. So it's a market of 60 million people that needs everything. It has resources. So in a way, it's similar to PNG, except it has also a bigger population. That, uh, so you have also a consumer market, plus you have a possibility you know, to uh, extract resources in oil and gas, in minerals, in agribusiness. So it's, it's, a very, it's, it's considered to be a sweet spot for frontier markets. And now what you will see you know, will be a big geopolitical uh, battle between the United States and Europe and some individual countries to position, in, position themselves in, in Myanmar. Mm -hmm. Exactly how it will all pan out, we shall see. But it's, it's definitely mm -hmm. the biggest news of 2012 and 13. Do stay with us, there's more on agribusiness after the break. Now, Papua New Guinea's economy rides on the back of mining and petroleum. However, agribusiness is one area that needs a lot of attention as a sustainable means of income, where almost 70% of the country's population relies on either it be commercial or subsistence agriculture. The 2013 national budget is leaning towards this concept, which is in line with Vision 2050 and PNG Development Strategic Plan 2010 to 2030. So there's a lot of groundwork to be done. Agribusiness, where does Papua New Guinea stand in this, uh, in, the, in the sector of ag agribusiness? How are we faring in, in this area? I think in terms of potential, it's considered as one of the uh, low-hanging fruits. Um, it's seen particularly, particularly interesting from, from palm oil producers because, um, I don't know if you're aware, but uh, we have kind of reached a, a, a limit on how much more capacity, export capacity, we can add to palm oil in Malaysia and Indonesia. So although Indonesia has emerged as the biggest palm oil producer in the world, it also has a very big population of its own. So its net exports are quite small and likely that Indonesia could be even become a net importer. Malaysia, on the other hand, is a big exporter, but they have reached a limit as to how much more land they can uh, acquire and use for palm oil because they have uh, limits on uh, deforestation, etc., and environmental questions. Whereas Papua New Guinea is considered still at the very beginning of this process. It has a fairly small population of its own and can become a significant player in adding new exports to palm oil. So from that sense, it's a, it's a critical, has a critical role to play in this particular area. Of course, other, I mean, as I said, there's, there's a huge variety of thing, other things that PNG could uh, focus on in from fisheries I know is very big and uh, we just uh, learned there's uh, some plans afoot in uh, lay in terms of establishing a processing plant so which is very good news because it adds more value to the, the, the supply chain um, and now the companies from the Philippines are particularly looking at this um, then you have obviously uh, coffee coca rubber, timber. So this, the sky is the limit, really. It's just a question of uh, the old, good old uh, uh, factors, such as uh, reform, land restructuring, 
uh, funding, all of these uh, apparently simple but all very difficult complex. census complex okay. issues that need to be overcome in order to unleash this potential. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show. Unless you have anything you, you'd like to add to our viewers? No, we look very much forward to another year of working here in Port Moresby. We're excited about this opportunity and look forward to delivering the, our findings, the conclusions for this year. Thank you very much. Thank you. Meanwhile, the 2013 budget indicates that despite the temporary slowdown in most non-mining sectors, the agriculture, forestry and fisheries sectors are expected to grow this year by 2.8% following the depressed activity of last year. But things are looking up for this year. Price is expected to perform better on the assumption that global demand improves, production is anticipated to increase. And that has been our first edition of Business PNG for the year 2013. We'd like to make this program as informative as we can. Thus, your comments and suggestions would be greatly appreciated. Please send them through to businesspng at mtv.com.pg. I'm Festus Meigner. Bye for now. <laughs>